Hello, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to show you my portable astrophotography setup that I've been using now for quite a while. That's worked out really well for me and uh, may, uh, may help you out, inspire you to come up with a similar setup. And what I have here is I have a USB cable that I purchased on Amazon.com. It's quite long. I don't remember the exact length, but it has repeaters, electronic repeaters, uh, for the signal. So I've got this cable. It runs out here out to my setup and it runs to a USB hub and I have all of my devices, electronic devices, plugged into that USB hub. So it just runs here into my garage and it runs into my house to the kitchen table right here. And that's where I uh, put my telescope when I'm not using it, my setup. So I just roll it out up to my driveway. And the backyard, I've got trees in the backyard, so I can't do any astrophotography back there. So I do it here on the driveway. But what you can see here is I have I have these walls that I made and they're made out of PVC and there's black commando cloth that I've just got screwed down to the outside. And I do that of course to block the neighbor's lights and there's also a, a street light right over there on the corner. Uh, so these are a must have, make a really big difference. And the commando cloth, it, it blocks the light quite well and I actually got this idea from somebody else that I had found online that had done the same thing but these fold up there's two of them and I just have them in my garage uh, up against the wall I, so I bring them out I unfold them and I wrap them around my telescope and what you can see here is I've got a weight to hold down the corners I don't always need these chairs but it was very windy earlier today and I didn't want to take take this down I got the garbage can up there against the other side so I have the weights those ropes are tied down to the corners and I've got another weight over here and that is tied up to this one panel and then I've got the other panel resting up against that corner so it works pretty good uh, this is my portable uh, portable dolly that I have and I actually um, got this from the guy who sold me my telescope mount. I purchased this Atlas, Orion Atlas EQG mount and he had made uh, this dolly to go with it and it works really well. He welded it all together so he basically he gave it to me for free. It was very nice for him to do that. Um, but I know you can buy buy carts like this online that are very similar they may not have the plywood but I'm sure you can uh, come up with something on your own and you can see what he's got here he's got these these screws these long uh, bolt screws on the end to uh, to rest on the driveway so it doesn't move so I just screw it down there and it just rests and they're very easy easy to turn uh, I've got all my uh, my power cables down here and you can see up here I've got a moonlight controller and then my USB hub is over here all right you can't see that very well with the sunlight it's right here there's the cable coming out of it the power going into it so in my case I've got I've got six devices. You need USB 3.0 to support this many devices. It's a US, USB 3.0 cable. And here is a controller for the tripod. I have the Takahashi Epsilon E130D. Got number 1D001. I thought that was kind of neat that I got the first one on that day or month or whatever that was. Um, but I really, really like this scope. It is very difficult to collimate. I don't have it perfectly collimated. It's pretty close. Um, I did about the best I could. I, I could I could maybe work on it a little bit more, but it's just the outer edges. The, the very outer edge probably... Um, no more than 5% on the edges that I've got to crop out. 
this uh, this moonlight focuser setup that's this right here it has screws Allen screws that are in these holes and what you can do is you can adjust the, the tilt of your camera so you need to do that to get rid of you might have stigmatism in the setup which I did and I uh, had to adjust the tilt of the focuser and that went away there's another hole over here and there's a hole over there on the other side I have my guide scope here it's a stellar view 50 millimeter guide scope I've got the Lodestar times 2C uh, I use that as my guide camera it works very well it's very very sensitive I actually used it for astrophotography for a while for a crude astrophotography setup um, but it works great I never have any problems finding a star you can see I've got a rope tied around here to this um, back side of the guide scope it's a little bit awkward but that's to keep it rigid I could probably come up with something better you can see here's the uh, Here's the guide scope bracket or mount for the Epsilon and I've got it screwed down on there. I had to buy this bracket, these O-rings or these rings, not O-rings, rings for the guide scope. Uh, but it's, it's pretty rigid now. I don't get much, 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 uh, excuse me, much differential flexure. I really don't have to crop very much out of my pictures on the edges. It doesn't drift very much at all. So this Epsilon, it's a very wide field scope and it works out really well with this Orion Atlas because the Orion Atlas, it's not the most precise mount, but it does a pretty good job. So when you're imaging a wide field, it's not really a problem at all. And I've done some narrow field astrophotography as well and haven't had any issues with this mount. Looking back, I wonder if I should have got the Pro. I probably would get the Pro, um, but it is what it is, and it's working out for me. This is the Pole Master here on the front. And this is, I think, is a must-have to get this thing polar aligned. I've got my polar alignment down to no more than a couple minutes, maybe five minutes at the most with this. So there's some videos you can watch on how to do that to align your scope using Pole Master. Um, this is set up from last night. It's it's aligned and it's it's ready to go. Um, but again, it's a it's a very portable setup. It takes me no more than 15 minutes to set it up, and it's even quicker to tear down. So I'll set it up. I'll let it go over the evening. I'll wake up in the morning. I'll come out here. I'll take it down. I'll roll it in, and I might have to go to work if it's during the week. Um, prefer to have a setup in my backyard but just too many trees too many trees back there not as much room as there is here on the front on the front uh, part of my part of my uh, yard so I hope that was helpful again uh, it's very quick setup um, even if you don't have a permanent observatory you can do something like this just wheel it out on your driveway like I do and it works out great sometimes you know I want to take pictures in the evening and I'll come home from work and I'm tired and, and I say to myself do I really want to take the time to roll this out um, but it's really not that big of a deal once I get get started doing it I find out that well it only took you know 10 minutes or so and it's a very minimal amount of time and effort on my part to have to set this up. Though a permanent observatory would be ideal maybe one day. Something I didn't talk about yet, I've got the ASI 1600mm uh, from ZWO here, the camera. I'm very happy with that. And then I've got uh, a filter wheel here on top, also from ZWO. And I already showed you moonlight setup tube rings that you have to buy separate from the scope and that's my setup so uh, I hope you enjoy that and maybe it will uh, inspire you to, to have a similar type of setup one day thanks